Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us today for our Zoom series. Uh, today we have a very special guest. We're going to learn all about what it's like to work at Madison Square Garden. So I'm super excited. Um, before we get started, a couple of things. We do want to make sure that y'all are able to ask questions, but you are muted for safety reasons. So if you would like to ask a question, just simply use the chat feature. If you're on your cell phone, you will have to click more in order to be able to access the chat feature. But as we are talking today, please go ahead and submit those questions. And at the end of the interview session, we'll make sure and get your questions answered. So without further ado, um, I'm going to let Johnny introduce, your, uh, introduce himself. Uh, let me get you unmuted. Hang on just one second. All right, Johnny, if you will just tell us a little bit about who you are, where you're from, and what you do. All right. Well, happy Thursday, everybody. April, good to see your face. Thank you for letting me join in today. I'm insanely excited to share. And, and uh, you know, I always look at people as collaborators, future collaborators and creators. So my name is Johnny Greco. I, uh, I work at Madison Square Garden with the New York Knicks, New York Rangers, and the Westchester Knicks of the G League. I've been insanely lucky to work in pro sports for over 20 years, a, a career I didn't know was a, a real thing until I got to college and then started, started working. So that was kind of cool. And uh, I've been um, really blessed to do something that doesn't feel like work. I was uh, born in Italy because my dad was going to college out there, but I grew up in upstate New York, up in Oneonta, and it was an incredible upbringing, small town, loved it. And I went to film school because I was enamored by movies. I loved movies. I played sports and I thought sports were incredible, but I wasn't going to be good enough to actually play in the pros. So my two passions, film made a little bit more sense. And then I went to school, did the film thing and I loved it and I thought it was incredible. And, and then sports came calling and my first internship at 19 years old was working for professional sports but using the, the fan experience, audio, video um, sort of skill set that I've learned from the film world. So then as I developed, I got to learn how much more goes into a sporting sports entertainment experience, all the stories, all the narration, all the skills, all the writing, all the video work, all the lighting. And uh, the way it all kind of came together was just insane. And then I've been able to work for different teams with unbelievable producers and world-class talent that have uh, definitely been a lot more talented than me. I think I've been more lucky than good in my, on my path so far. So now, after a few different stops, I'm at Madison Square Garden, the world's most famous arena. I still pinch myself because that was kind of the, the, the first ever basketball game I ever saw was for my 12th birthday at Madison Square Garden. And to think I'm on the other side of that, um, I'll, I'll always remain a fan in all I do because I think that keeps us human and keeps it relatable. But it's, uh, it's a pretty incredible thing that I get to do this every day. So what does your everyday look like? Your daily activities? What does your job look like? It, it's, it's, it's a fascinating kind of world. Working in sports is exciting because the, the simple answer is like, oh, you get paid to watch sports. And it's like, <laughs> well, I used to do that when I wasn't getting paid. So that sounds kind of good. Um, you know, our, our group and, and other groups I've worked with, we're kind of in charge of, of trying to create the fan experience, which is what after the sport because the sport always leads people want to come they want to see the sport they want to see their team win they want to cheer for their their the hometown team but it, if things go well we can support that if things on the court or on the ice don't go so well we can also support that with really engaging content with great partnership promotions and just having a good time you know our objective kind of kind of in, in my life what i've been a part of is you hope the next day People say, hey, April, were you at the game? And you're like, yeah, I was. Oh, my God, great game. You know, I got a high five, and the mascot came up and, and gave me a shirt, and I was up on the video screen, and we were dancing to this song. It's like, yeah, but did the team win, April? And you're like, oh, you know what? No, they didn't, but, man, I had a good time. So we can't control the outcome of the game, obviously. So we try to just support the environment with music, with videos, with replays, uh, with, with promotions and characters and, and try to give everyone a really good time uh, and, and support the game. But, but if the game's not going so well, also support it. 
<laughs> so probably a lot of our students that are on here have been to some sort of live sporting event. And, you know, when you're in that experience, you don't really think about that there's so much work that goes in behind the scenes to make that experience happen. Um, so I think it's really cool that you're able to share with the students that that's a real job. That's a career that someone has. Yeah. What are some other careers that maybe you've discovered throughout your adult life that you didn't even know existed when you were in high school? Hundreds of them. First off, uh, my, all the teachers that that love and care for all of us and cared for us for so long, and all the coaches who put everything into growing us in, as individuals to be professionals, to be helpful in the world, we're doing the best they can. And and I am thankful for all the teachers. I'm still like Facebook friends with my elementary school principal. Like I I, I thank them all the time for what they did for me. And even with all that being said, I didn't know that following my passion could be a career. You hear people talk about that, but it was something from seven years old on, I had a video camera and I was like, this is cool, this is what I'll do, but then I have to go to real school and I have to have a real job. And the, the truth is everything's real if you use your imagination and follow your dreams. And I was so lucky to take all the skill sets in all the classes from all the teachers and coaches and then apply them to something that I truly am passionate about. So I've learned Obviously, in the film world, all of the jobs that are there. In the sports entertainment world, there are so many layers. You go to the game and you watch a basketball game. You're like, oh, cool. There's LeBron James down there. That's awesome. Well, who's the trainer that's taping his ankles? Who are the coaches and the, and the analytics mathematicians who are figuring out the statistics to help that team be as prepared as possible? Who are the artists and the creators who are picking the right songs for the right moments? Who are the, the salespeople who are bringing people in and selling a product and getting people excited? Who's using a marketing brain to find where Coca-Cola matches up really good with our brand for this promotion? There's so many thoughtful little intricacies in putting the whole thing together. It's, it's kind of like a really big band or, you know, or, or an artist that goes out and performs. Beyonce is amazing. I love Beyonce. But if you talk to what Beyonce does and who she works with to get Beyonce to be Beyonce, first off, it's always, you know, kindergarten rules, be kind, be nice, work really, really hard, but understand that you're part of a team and all of the parts are just as important. And you're not always going to be the forward facing uh, superstar. For, to raise superstars and make them be what they are, there's so much support that we can offer different groups to, to find success and find fun. So what would you say would be the best advice for students who are looking for a career maybe in sports, they're really passionate about sports, what would be some good ways that they could research different opportunities or just be aware of what all's out there? I think, and, it, and it's funny, sports is such a, such a unique path and I've been really lucky to work in, in what I call more of the sports entertainment world. And that's fun because that's easy. Like, you know what research is? Listen to a song and get inspired. Look at the lyrics. What do they mean? Watch a film. Watch old film. Watch sports. Absorb sports. Love sports. Probably do what people who love sports do anyway. And, and just consume, 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 which in today's world, it's kind of it's everywhere, right? You can find everything at a click and, and kind of dig in to get knowledge, but then be thoughtful in it, you know? Start to ask the question of like, well, why did this work? I know I love this song, but why is it? You know, what was the work that went into it? It's really easy to look at something and be like, oh, that's really great, I love it. That must've been easy to do. And then you start to learn about the work, right? Success is disguised as a whole, a lot, lot of hard work that goes into that, right? So like, there it is, it's success, but the amount of levels that you have to go through to build uh, into whatever that is for you is really, really important. So I would just make connections, realize that honestly, the things your teachers are teaching you, you may not think they'll directly apply, but what they are teaching you is how to be human, how to have character, how to have integrity. You show up late for class, like, oh, what's the big deal? It's a big deal because when you show up late for work, you lose jobs. When you show up late for work, your integrity is questioned. When you don't finish your projects or you don't pass in the math assignment, it's it's transferable into the real life workspace and those tools, which it sounds crazy, but I promise you, those tricks and tools and characters that you characteristics you develop now will come into such a natural place when you start working and doing other things. And and it's a powerful uh, reminder that your career is right now, right? Mm -hmm. I, I think your career starts 
the minute you're born and if you love your career and you can be authentic in who you are as a human being, all of a sudden they kind of fuse together and you can really enjoy what you do. I would, I would contend probably a lot of teachers are like, that's my purpose, right? We have our families and we love this, but teachers are born to teach. They're born to bring out greatness in people that didn't see what they, they didn't see. And it's such a powerful characteristic, but they aren't just teachers. That, that's, that's who they are in their lives. The best teachers I've ever seen, that's how kind of I would um, describe them, I would say. So understand that, that your career has already started. It, there's just not certain labels to it just yet. I love that you said that because so many times high school students always think about, well, when I graduate or mm -hmm. graduate college, mm -hmm. it's always a future thought process yeah. for them to truly realize that right now they can be making decisions that yeah. can impact the success of their career. Yeah. One of my questions for you would be what, what skills or what characteristics do you think attributed to your success in this field? It's a great question. Um, you know, I, I've always been uh, creative and I love that. And again, I'll give, I'll give a shout out to my English teacher in 10th grade, Miss Murphy. I, I was an okay writer. I was really creative and I loved making movies. And I asked her, I said, hey, instead of writing a report on this book, can I make a movie about it? And she was like, yes, because the idea is to create, it's to recap the story. And she saw that there was an opportunity to, to sort of play to my strengths and supported that. And I really, really appreciated it. So I think, you know, find something, it's cliched and you guys all probably hear everyone say this, find something you really love to do and keep doing it and keep mm -hmm. refining it and know that you can always improve and you can always get better and you can ask other people who you admire and, and, and keep thriving and developing. And the minute you think you've made it, realize that there's a whole bunch more steps to keep making it and, and stay relentless and hungry. And I, I've found that, that, just, just having a drive to, to, to live your day with greatness in the best mm -hmm. you can. And greatness doesn't have to be complicated. It could be being polite to people, but be great at that. And, and then if you get the next day, that's really powerful. And then you get the next day and you develop this toolkit that works on any team, right? If you play on the soccer team or you're a mechanic, you're part of a team. And, mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter if you work for a really big company or, or a mom and pop restaurant that, that, feeds people and creates smiles. That's really important too. You all have, you have to work together with differences and embrace the differences and find what your purpose is and, and be excellent in that and, and continue to grow. Yeah, I, I, that's awesome advice. I've heard so many times you've just got to immerse yourself in whatever it is that you're passionate yep. about and you'll discover yep. those careers. They'll come along. So. Yeah, for sure. Next question for you is what would you consider to be your biggest professional accomplishment and how did you make it happen? I was watching some of the, the other uh, reach and teaches and uh, this question came up and I'm like, Ooh, I want to come up with a good one. And, <laughs> and I'm going to steal one already. That was said was I've been really lucky to work with my wife, right? She's my best friend. She's, she's a muse of mine. She's just an incredible sports producer. She's worked for Olympic games. She's worked for NBA teams, NHL teams, and she's the greatest producer I've ever worked with. And oh, by the way, I got to work with her and learn from her and grow. And, and we got to do the NBA finals together with her show calling. This was in, I think it was 2007, when LeBron James is in the NBA finals at the Cavs and he's doing the powder poof and she gets covered by the powder poof because she has the best seats in the house. She's sitting courtside for this. And I'm on headset back in this dark control room <laughs> cave with this incredible team. And we're, we're doing all the video production, but her and I got to be a part of this family and build these really great shows. And that was always going to be the, the, the kind of the, the greatest thing, right? We produce shows together, got married, we produce kids together. It was really, really kind of great. So um, been really lucky to do that. that that's, you know, in, in my heart of hearts, that was the best. There's cool things I've been able to do. Like I got to throw LeBron James in alley-oop. I got to work with John Cena. I got to meet Hulk Hogan. I got to, my first ever video shoot as a professional was with Hank Aaron. Like the, 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 the list, is, like I have to write these things down and pinch myself every time. It's unbelievable for a, a, a seven-year-old sports nerd who loves movies to be able to do all of those things. I, I'm still that seven-year-old sports nerd. I get it. Like it's incredible to me. Every day I got to pinch myself. That's awesome. And I love that the, it never wears off. It's all. Mm -hmm 
the new. It sounds like you're excited every time it happens. Yeah, absolutely. I, it's been it's been a, a wonderful path, and like I, I'm in, I, I'm thankful for today. I'm thankful to share this with all of you. I'm thankful to learn from all of you. I think what you guys are doing is incredible. Like I said, teachers, coaches. I talk to all of mine still, and and I don't even have much to say other than thank you, because because you just <laughs> don't realize how much until you get older how much work was going into what every single detail was to, to bring out the best in who you were. And, 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 you know, we wouldn't be anywhere without all of that guidance. So I, I'm thankful for what you're doing and to be a part of this is awesome. So thank you. April. We certainly appreciate it. Um, the last question that I have for you, and then we're going to open it up to students. All right. Is, what is something that you wish you would have learned at a younger age? So this is, this is a good one. Actually, I wrote down a couple notes here. The biggest thing to me was it, it goes back to like kindergarten rules, like be nice to one another. There are people who are so much more creative and so much more talented than me. There's a lot of them. I'm really nice though. And, and, and I like to be <laughs> kind and I like to work with people. And there's something about having a really strong attitude that for mo most cases will completely overtake aptitude. There's a lot of people who are really talented and really skilled and really good, but their attitudes aren't, aren't team oriented. Their attitudes aren't to, to be the best they can. Their attitudes aren't to, to lift one another up and work together in a unified sense. There's a lot of ways to skin that cat in the professional world, in the sports world, in the entertainment world. My, my personal preference is to work with teammates who I know I can count on. I can look to the left, I can look to the right, and we might be working a 100 hour work week now, again, I don't feel like what I do is work, but, it, but it, that's a grind. That's long. But then you get to see the smiles that you create, the spirits that you lift. And it's great to see that from the fans, but it's even cooler sometimes to look at your left and right and be like, oh my God, we did this together as a unit. We worked together mm -hmm. and we did made the impossible possible in the most beautiful way. And that, that's a really powerful tool. So I think just remembering that the career starts early, the relationships matter. You know, there's a point, which I hope everyone gets to where, your resume is so important. Your schooling is so important, but, but you develop a reputation through the relationships and people are like, I want to work with April because she's a hard worker. She brings, she lights up a room. She makes me better. The resume is important, but like you start to, your character becomes bigger than anything. And, and that, that's a, it's an, it's a crazy place to be. Mm -hmm. I, I love that. I've always told my students that networking is so important. Yeah building those relationships. Yep. I think that attributes so much of your success to, to any career path truly mm -hmm. that's out there. I'll never forget April. There, there's my very first internship, unpaid internship with the Florida Marlins. I'm 19 years old. I'm working at the restaurant to be able to pay for the rent. I'm living by myself. I'm, baseball season is long. It's a long season. There's like 13 <laughs> games in a row and I'm doing the, the lunch shift and spilling Bro broccoli cheese soup on my arm and getting burned and then working the game. And, you know, the, the, the group that hired me as an intern there at 19, his name is Pete Soto. He's one of my greatest friends and mentors. And he works for the Los Angeles Chargers now. He moved on to another team while I was there. Two years later, he's like, hey, Greco, I remember you used to get me coffee. I remember you used to sleep in the office. Even though you couldn't do anything for us, you just wanted to stick around. I've got a chance for you to work at the Olympics in Salt Lake City. Do you want to be on my team? I'm 21 years old, April. Like this doesn't happen. And I got a chance to go do this. And it was, I was definitely not the best person. I was the worst person skill wise on that <laughs> team. But he remembered my attitude and he remembered my work mm -hmm. ethic. And that kind of teed up all the things my mom and dad told me and all my teachers and coaches told me a long time ago. But it was really like proof in the pudding right there. And, and mm -hmm. I, I've really kind of tried to emulate and live that as much as I can in what I do. Absolutely. I mean, even even students that are in high school, they may be working part time jobs, at yep. fast food restaurants or sure. service jobs. And uh, we always like to tell them that those are stair steps. Oh, yeah. Something in the future. You never know when that relationship might bring itself right back around again. It's un I used to bag groceries. I, I would do bag groceries. My dad was a veterinarian. I used to clean out the poop in the cages. That was part <laughs> of my job. Like, these are not things I wanted to do. But like, that's part of the work ethic. You do it, you get your hands dirty. And in my case, they literally got really dirty. <laughs> that's what, that's what happens. And, and it does, it's all part of your career. It's part of your character. It's, it's what you're developing that will be in that toolkit that you'll use 
whatever the job, whatever your, who your boss may be, whatever kind of boss you may end up being, these are all things that carry over. Yes, absolutely. Well, students, you guys get your questions in. We have some good ones that are coming in now. So the first question that we have says, right. how do you help narrow down what your passion is? Mm -hmm. I like filmmaking too, but there's so many other things that I like doing. It's just a matter of figuring out which one or do I combine the things that I like together? <laughs> wow, these are great questions. Thank you for that question. Um, you know, being living with passion is important. I, I, I think uh, it, it makes what you do really engaging and purposeful. I think uh, there's a there's a, one of my favorite books of all time is called Creativity Inc. It's it's kind of the story of the Pixar team and how they brainstorm and how they build and how they storytell and it's it's an, it's fascinating. But there's a quote in there where it says, "Be wrong, be wrong fast." So mm -hmm. I would say if you have a passion, oh my God jump in cannonball in ron burgundy cannonball here we go <laughs> and if you don't like it then get out of the pool and find another pool um but don't don't have trepidation don't hold back in what you want to do because that that is where regrets live um go for something that you're passionate about and find out maybe you're not passionate about it as a career but but i would follow that if you have that and sometimes avenues will open because you do that but the skill set especially if you love film video production i'm a video editor at heart and a, and a storyteller with a camera at heart so you learn to shoot with your parents video camera trust me it was a thing a long time ago kids <laughs> um, so, so you have this then you learn to edit and then you learn to write and then you learn to do math because you have to fit it in a 30 minute window and then you're like whoa i didn't think i was gonna have to use these skills i learned in ninth grade but you do and, and all of a sudden again it's that toolkit but you start to develop and, and be the the jack of all trades, right? But eventually you will start to master a few. But even then, like I'm a, I'm a Star Wars nerd, find your Yoda, but you can keep evolving. It never stops being a Jedi. So be your Jedi, find it, but, but be, use your passion. That's a powerful tool. I love that, that's such great advice. So the next question we have is, do you guys have high school students that work for you in the career that you have? Like, are there opportunities for high school students? This is a go-getter question. This is the way you got to be thinking, right? Because you're already working. Networking, relationships, yes, absolutely. I, some of my proudest moments that I've been a part of with teams I've worked with were uh, we would have DECA days when I was in Cleveland. And we would have the, the, the arts and the science. And these students come in and we would proudly share what we do because, man, what we do is fun and it's exciting. It's a lot of work, but it's fun and it's exciting. And certain high school kids would stay connected through the years. And we developed like high school internships. I was like, I, I don't know how official it was at the time, but I was like, <laughs> this passion, I can't let it not ha not be played. So we brought it in and Al Allison Cole was her name. I remember she came in and she was a high school intern. She went to college. She stayed in touch because relationships matter. Couldn't tell you what she graduated with, but when she was able to be hired, we brought her in. And that's one of the coolest stories ever because at 16, she was like, I remember she's like, I want to edit movie trailers. And I'm like, well, you know, I wanted to make movies and I'm working in sports. So you just never know, stay in touch. People generally mean it when they say that. And you'd be shocked at how few people actually stay in touch. So <laughs> she was one who did. And, and there's, there's a handful of people that were in high school that reached out that have had flourishing careers. And, and I was this much of it, but it was such a cool honor to see the passion, see the, the question like this question that the student just asked, because they're thinking that way. And I think it's really valuable to not not wait too long until ah, I'll, I'll get it in later. It's like you, you can, but there's some other people who are already <laughs> asking these questions and starting this stuff. So the next question, um, I think this is a good one too. You mentioned it earlier. Um, you were talking about fan engagement yes. or experiences. Um, mm -hmm. can you explain what that means and maybe give us some examples. Sure. So fan experience is becoming really important in, in the sports entertainment world. And there's so many parts of that experience, but, but kind of like I said, if you go to a sport, if you go to a concert and it's your favorite band, you're probably going to have a great time, right? But the experience is the parking, the experience is the mood lighting before the band plays. It's, it's of course the sound quality in the band itself. And how much did I pay for the tickets? How hard was it to get there? That's all part of the experience. But in the, the concert world, like you kind of know the story, right? If you make a film, making the film is hard, but you go to the movie theater, 
good sound quality, good comfortable seats, nice bag of popcorn, maybe throwing some raisinets in there. That's a crazy combination. It'll blow your mind. Then you watch this film. It's been a thoughtful process to build this out. The live experience in sports, that's a little bit trickier because there's so much out of your control. So we create a script and a format that has sponsorship elements, ticketing elements, PA announcements. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Reach and Teach. Da -da -da -da. Brought to you by, you go through all these things. Well, when the puck drops or the, the ball is tipped off, things can change, right? In hockey, you could go up 3 nothing in the first minute. And you're like, whoa, this is a great experience. Well, if you go down 3 nothing in that first minute, you got to be a little fluid with your experience. And you got to create these moments with your mascots, right? A funny skit with a mascot goes a long way. That's great. Creating video elements with your players where you sit down and do interviews with them and they, they ask questions to the fans. How do you engage with your fans by creating enthusiasm, right? To buy more tickets, but also to cheer for their team. You know, how do you create an experience that educates your fans and teaches them, oh, did you know that ice is only this thick at an NHL arena because? Did you know that your left winger is averaging this many assists this week? There's so many different ways to infuse an experience and engagement, and, and, and it's limitless. And we're constantly trying to develop new ways. In this current climate we're in right now with sports kind of on pause, this is going to probably have an explosion of innovation that we haven't seen in a really long time. And in the darkest of times, the Great Depression, you talk about this, there were few things people had any money for at all. And it was kind of like food and art. And, and that was it. And, and not always in that order. People would be like, I need to hear music right now to lift my spirits as I've lost my job. I've lost my home. I don't know. This is a really sad, hard time. But there's a point where storytelling and art and creation can lift spirits to a place that's really, really powerful. So the fan experience is it's a it's a it's a broad thing. It goes all over the place, but it's a really powerful thing. We have to honor the fan and we have to remember, you know, the first game you ever went to. I do. I remember how it felt. I couldn't tell you who won the game, but I remember my dad took me and I remember there was a home run and Howard Johnson lifted his cap, you know, because, you know, he was giving a tip in the hat to the crowd and the, the green grass and the smell of the hot dogs. Like that's, that's the, the experience. And that's, that's visceral. That lives, lives on forever. How do we program that and, and, and celebrate that for our fans. That's a perfect lead in to the next question that's here is what are y'all doing during this downtime where there's no sports being played? <laughs> so you, it's, it's a really, really intelligent question. There, there's, this is the opportunity where everyone is galvanizing and connecting more than ever. We're, we're taking a lot of time to evaluate what we've done, right? There, there's a, again, another really good book, Simon Sinek. Start with why. We're asking our why, like, oh, we do this thing and we've always done it. Why do we do that? And then you kind of research and you find out that, and, and then you can be a little more thoughtful in your programming. But right now we're trying to be innovative. We're trying to, to listen to the guidelines that are being in place, but we're developing our toolbox because when the, the floodgates open and we're allowed to create and bring people in, there's a lot of hungry producers and creators and storytellers who are like chomping at the bit to share their, their skills and share their love for what we do. So, so constantly growing, constantly evolving, reading books, listening to podcasts, speaking to you fine folks, all of these things develop our own skill sets to be better in our, in our jobs, to be better storytellers and what we're going to do. So I've, I've enjoyed it because I like to see what other teams are doing and in the grind of a season, where this year at MSG, we had nine straight hockey and basketball games in nine days. It's hard to sit down and say, I'm going to call my buddy in Sacramento. You, you don't get a chance to do that. So this is that time where a lot of these teams and groups are getting together. We're talking, we're sharing ideas, we're inspiring one another, we're asking the why. And, and I think it's going to be this furious creation once, once the doors open and we can get back to it again. So it's, it's been an exciting time, as odd as that is to say. I mean, that's super exciting. I can't wait to see what the new normal looks yeah. like. Just like you said, there's going to be a lot of innovation that comes out of this. For sure, for sure. We have time for one more question. The right. last question is, what has been your biggest challenge and how did you overcome it? Uh, you know what? Oh, there's there's, there's a, a lot of examples here. I'll, I'll talk about my time in, in Las Vegas. I got a chance to go and, and work for the Vegas Golden Knights, which was an expansion franchise. And we started from scratch. So you're like, wait, hockey in the desert. That doesn't seem like that would work. And it's a new team and it's in the entertainment capital of the world. Like who on earth would take that job? Well, 
the president of the, the Vegas Golden Knights, who's a dear friend of mine, Kerry Bubols, I worked with him two jobs before, and he's like, hey, Greco, I want you to come out here because I want you to be a part of this. And I was like, that sounds so scary. I, I don't know if I can do that. And we kept talking, and then he's like, let's do this. And so we built out an entire team. We worked together. Hey, appreciate the thumbs up, Ron. We worked, we worked out the whole, the whole team, built it up, created the story, asked the whys, had this unbelievable magic sort of moment where we built this together. Team won, which was really good. But, but the very first game, you know, unfortunately, nine days before that was a terrible tragedy in Las Vegas, right? There was, there was a shooting and it was, it was horrific and it was painful. And we had all these plans that we had spent months working on, countless hours being very thoughtful on. And we had nine days to sort of reprogram and change everything. And we did it. And we put the community first, we put our team first, and we galvanized the city of Las Vegas in a way, and we helped heal people. And one of my best friends on earth, her name is Erin, and she, she works at the Golden Knights, and she was my right hand there. I used to say like, hey, we're not doctors, we're not surgeons, we don't save lives, like there's way more important things. And she's like, Greco, you know what? We may not save lives, and we may not cure cancer, but for three hours tonight, we may make that person who has cancer forget they have it. We might- Oh, we, you just gave me chills. <laughs> it's a true, it's a, it's a really important thing that I, I never really gave a storyteller's credit on before, but I saw this in Vegas where, you know, there were, there were a lot of tears. It was a really difficult time in life. And, and at that point you kind of question like, I should have been a doctor. Like what I'm doing isn't, it's not important enough. And, and then you see that moment where we were able to shine and it was all about the city and all about my, the incredible teammates that I had there. But, but it was a moment where I was like, oh, wait, this is important. This, I'm really proud to have been a part of this. So that was, that was one of the really difficult challenges, but it, it makes you better, right? Like you climb that mountain. Oh, my God. Well, now there's another mountain. There's always going to be another one, right, if you're hungry. So it was uh, an incredible experience. I thank you for that thoughtful question and uh, appreciate that. Yeah. Yes. I, I mean, you gave me chills. I love to... I can just see your passion shine through with what you do. And you've had such good advice for our students today. And I just thank you. Thank you for giving us your time and your energy and your excitement. <laughs> I, I, April, I appreciate it so much. I've been looking forward to this. Everyone who, who tuned in, asked questions, I appreciate all of you. It's an honor to, to be here and, and share this with you. Keep working hard. Enjoy the day while you have it. And um, just thank you again, guys. Happy creating to all of you. Yes, and we'll definitely stay in touch. We'll see. Please do. Please do. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.